Today we are looking at lead code number 442. It's a question called find all duplicates in an array. And here we're given an integer array nums of length n, where all the integers of nums are in the range of 1 to n, and each integer appears once or twice. We got to return all the array we got to return an array of all the integers that appear twice. All right, so here we have four, three, two, seven, eight, two, three, one, and we have two and three. So you can see two appears once and twice right there, and three appears uh, once and twice right there. And so we push in two and three, and we return that. Here, the only, only integer that's appearing twice is one, so we're returning one, and nothing appears twice in this example, so we return an empty array. And we are guaranteed that each element in nums appears once or twice. And a follow-up here is, could we do this without extra space and an O of n runtime? Okay, so there are two ways to do this. We can do this in linear space, and then we can do this in constant, constant space. Uh, and we'll look at both ways of, of approaching this. If we want to do the, the linear space way of, of of approaching this, it's it's not too bad. We just want to do a hash. Okay, you can use a JavaScript object or a hash table, uh, whichever, whichever, uh, whatever it's called in your particular language. And all we're going to do here is we're going to scan through this array and count the frequency of all these numbers. That's all we got to do. All right. So I'll just quickly kind of show you what that'll look like. When we get to four, we're going to make four the key and count the frequency of it. It's appearing once. Here we're getting the three, so three is going to appear once. Two is going to appear once. Okay, seven is going to appear once. Eight is going to appear once. And now two, because we hit two again, we're going to increment this and two is going to appear twice. Here we hit three again. We're going to increment the frequency of three. That'll equal two. And here we hit one and one will equal one. Okay. And so once we have this hash, then all we have to do is filter out the keys where the value is equal to two and then return the keys, push those keys into an array, push two and three into an array. And uh, that will be our result. And we can do that. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way, but we are using extra space. We're going to have to create worst case, uh, a hash that's going to be the size of the input. Okay. So now, how do we do this? How do we, how do we solve this question in constant space? It's not technically constant because we're going to have a result array that could be the size of the input. So, so technically, it is O of n space, but not creating any extra space besides the result. So how could we do that in constant space? There's a really important clue that's in this prompt, and that is that the range is from 1 to n. Okay, and this is this is really important because there's a lot of other lead code questions that that kind of give you this clue, and there's an efficient way of solving it when you're dealing with an array of of values in that array that are within the range of the indices of the length of the array. So to make it easier, because the values here are one indexed, so it's going from one to the length, I went ahead and just mark the indices here from 1 to 8. Okay, so let's just pretend the indices are mapped to, to one index. So how can we do this in constant space? And how can we use the property that the values inside of this array are within the range of the length of the array? So what we're going to do here is here we're at i, right? And if we look at the value at i, it's 4, what indice does that point to? What is the value at that indice? It's going to be this 7 right? And so what if we just go ahead and take that and then just negate that? We just put a minus sign right there on that 7, okay? That means that there is a 4 in the array. If that number at, 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 at the fourth index is negative, that means that, that somewhere in that array there's a 4 that pointed to this, this index right here, okay? So let's just move forward. So now this i is going to go to this 3. It's going to point to the third index, which the value is 2. And let's just go ahead and negate that as well. We're just going to put a negative sign on there. OK, we're going to move forward. And we're going to go to 2. Now it is minus 2. We're going to take the absolute value of that. And that's going to point to the index 2. 
which is pointing to the value of three. And we're just going to go ahead and put a minus sign right on there as well. Okay, moving forward, we're going to go to this seven. We're going to take the absolute value uh, of that value, which is seven. And that is going to point to this three. And we're just going to go ahead and put a minus sign on this three. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move forward to this eight. That's going to point to this value right there, that one. And we're going to put a minus sign on there. That's going to indicate that it's been visited. We're going to move forward, and now you can see when we get to this 2, right, it's going to point to this indice right here, and we can see that it's negative, and that means that, that we have been there before. We have been at this address, this 2 right here. At some point, we've been there before because it's negative. And so because we know that, what we can do is push this value of 2. Let's go ahead and point it here. Push this value of 2 right here into a result. Okay, so we have our result here. And I'm going to go ahead and push that 2 in there. Because the address that it's pointing to is negative. That means that somewhere else in the array there was a 2, meaning that it got here and it negated that. Okay, moving forward, I'm going to go to this 3. I'm going to take the absolute value of that, which is going to be 3. And again, here we go. We're here at this 2. It's negative. The value at the address of 3 is negative. That means at some point earlier in the array, we hit this, we hit this address, meaning that there is a duplicate. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that absolute value, and I'm going to go ahead and push it into the result. All right, moving forward, I'm going to go to this minus 1. That's going to point right over here. It's positive. That means it has not been visited. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that as negative to say that it's visited. And then I is going to go outside of the range. And you can see here that we do get the correct result. Okay. And now what about what, what do we have to think about our time and space complexity here? Well, we only have to do one scan. Versus if we did the hashing method, we'd have to do two or three scans. It's still O of n with the hashing method or this, this method. But with the hashing method, not only did we have to scan the array once to get all the frequency, but then we had to scan the array again to filter out any of the, the keys that had uh, a frequency of more than one. Here, there's only one scan that we have to do. And because we're using this, this kind of trick that this feature of this array that all the values here are in the range of the length of the array, we were able to do this just in one scan. And we don't have to create any extra space besides the result, okay? You can't avoid the result, but besides that, you know, we don't have to create a hash table that's the size of the array. So we can do this in constant space if we're not inclusive of our output. Okay, so our time complexity here is O of n, Okay, where n is the size of the, uh, the array. And then our space complexity is constant, Okay, if we're not inclusive of the result array, which is pretty good, which is pretty, pretty good. And this is a very important thing to remember is, is, is there's these clues in these questions that come up a lot where uh, there's so many other lead code questions where you'll see that the input is in a range of 0 to n or you know 1 to n. It's something that's in the range of the size of the array. Anytime you have that, then you can use the values in the array as a way to keep track of things. And it makes, you know, there's ways to solve it in a much more efficient way. Okay, so let's go ahead and code this up. We're going to go ahead and create our result. And this is going to equal an empty array. OK, and now we're going to go ahead and iterate over our array. So we'll say i equals 0, i is less than nums.length, i plus plus. OK, so now what do we have to do? We want to get our, our index that we're going to look, like the address that we're going to look in, in another part of the array. OK, so we can just say let idx equals math.abs of nums at i minus 1. 
So now why are we doing it this way? We want the absolute value because we're looking at the address here. And if it's negative, meaning that we visited before, that's not going to work as an indice. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't do it with negatives. It has to be between zero and um, the range of the array. Why are we doing this minus one? Because our input here is one indexed. Okay, so it's mapping. It's not mapping to the zeroth index. It's mapping to the one index. And so we just want to take whatever value is in nums of i and just minus it by one. Okay, and now we want to just create a variable for the value, which is going to be uh, what is currently in nums at idx. Okay, and now all we have to do is we have to check, is that value less than zero? Is that value negative? If that value is negative, it means we have visited there before. And that means we just want to push whatever is at the absolute value of nums at i. Okay, if not, then we want to go and make whatever is in there negative. So if val is less than zero, we're going to go ahead and have result dot push uh, math dot abs of nums at i. Okay, else what are we going to do? we are going to uh, negate whatever is in at nums at idx. So we're going to say nums at idx is going to equal minus nums at idx. OK, and then we're just going to go ahead and return our result. Let's go ahead and run that, make sure everything works. And we're good. OK, and you can see we're getting excellent performance here. Go ahead and run it again, see if we can make this go higher. Um, but yeah, we're beating out almost 90% on speed, and then we're beating out about 85% on space as well. So it's an excellent way to solve these types of problems. And it's a good thing to, to, to see if you can find these sort of clues in the question prompt. Like this right here, I think, is the big giveaway that the range is going to be from 1 to n. As soon as we know that, OK, the range is the values inside of our array are going to be integers between one and the, the range of the array, then we can go ahead, it just opens up a lot of different ways that we can go about solving it. Okay, so that is lead code number 442, find all duplicates in an array. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.